Hey guys, Pastor Justin Simmons here from Life Source Church, Perry Hall. I have a message for you today that God has given me that I believe will bring encouragement, refreshing, revelation, and hope to your life and your journey of faith in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and get yourself ready for what God has to share with you through His Holy Word and let your heart be opened, ready to receive what God has for you today. I'm truly believing God's best for you and all that is yours. But before we move into the message, go ahead and hit that thumbs up icon below the video to let us know that you enjoyed today's message. Also, smash that subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date with all our sermons and other resources provided on our YouTube channel. And if you like this message and think it could impact a friend or family member, hit that share button. I'll meet you back here at the conclusion of the message where I would like us to pray together, come into agreement for your prayer needs. God bless you. permit it. Amen. But uh, I want to ask if we could stand for the reading of the word. I just, I feel a, uh, I just feel something in this atmosphere today. It's from another world. It's not of this world, but Lord knows we need it. Somebody say amen. And I want to ask that you would open up your Bible you don't have, you're not going to have to go far to get to it. Open up your Bible to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. I'm going right to the very, very beginning here. If you have your Bible app on your phone or on a tablet, whatever you've got, you can open up to Genesis, chapter 1. And I'm going to just open by just reading the first two verses that are written in the Holy Word, which we could, many of us could know by memory, but... I want to have folks go to the Word just to see what it says, and I'm going to read it from the New King James today that says, starting in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and what? Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. I'm going to say that again. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Lord, for the next few moments, we just ask that you would speak to us through your holy word. Lord, give every man and woman, boy and girl, eyes to see and ears to hear your word. Lord, I pray for revelation of your word to happen in this place today, Lord God. And may not one person leave this place this morning without a touch from the spirit of the living God. God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, I pray. And every saint says amen and amen. You may be seated. In the presence of the Lord, I'm not. This is going to be. Uh, and somebody, somebody's going to say, yeah, they're going to laugh about it. My goal today is to try not to preach too long. And there's the laughs. By the way, there's there's a wedding that's going on later on today here in this sanctuary, and. Um, and I told the son on the phone, uh, I think it was yesterday I called, and I said, I told the son of the bride, I said, you know, I'm not going to be long-winded for that ceremony. And he just started laughing. I'm like, why are you laughing? What are you trying to say? You got a lot to say, I guess, you know. But today, my intention and my hope is to not speak too long. Why? Because for the last three days, I felt a 
tremendous burden to have an altar time to pray for people. I want to continue to get into my message preaching about the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we need the Holy Spirit. In the hour that we're in, we need the, the power, the anointing of God upon each and every son and daughter of God. If you, let me tell you something with all conviction and boldness inside of me that if you're going to make it in these last days, you are going to need power from another world. You will not be able to do it within your own power and strength. The Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power, but what? It says it's by his spirit, says the Lord. We need the spirit of God upon each and every one of us if we're going to make it and endure in this generation till the very end. Somebody say amen. And I want to continue getting into this teaching about the Holy Spirit. And the reason why I wanted to open today with reading the first two passages of the Bible is because I want everyone to see that the Holy Spirit is not a new thing. The Holy Spirit is not a new thing. When you see words like in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 where it says, Spirit of God, what does that mean? The Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit are one in the same. They're talking about the same thing. Somebody say amen. And just as Jesus said in John chapter 14 where he said, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Let me tell you something. The Trinity, the Godhead, three in one and the three are what? God the Father, Jesus the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit. So when we see the words, the Spirit of God, we know that it is another expression for the Holy Spirit. And what do we see here? We see just by reading the opening of the Bible, we see that with three words it starts, in the what? The beginning. As our Creator was forming the heavens and the earth, what we see all the way in the book of Genesis chapter 1 is we see the Holy Spirit hovering over the earth. Let me tell you something. Before there was light, there was Holy Spirit. Before there was a sky, there was the Holy Spirit. Before there was dry land, before there was vegetation and trees, before there was a sun, moon, and stars before there was a living creature or a single human being on the earth, there was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not simply uh, come about in the book of Acts chapter 2, but the Holy Spirit was there all the way in the beginning of creation of time. Somebody say amen. By the way, as a dis, I, I gotta just say something. I don't know if there's any uh, any nerds out there that kind of follow just um, you know the world of science. Um, I don't know if you know that there's this telescope that was launched into space. And I, somebody could help me out with the name. I slipped my mind for a moment. It's not the Hubble, but it's a new one that to replace the Hubble. And it was just the other day that, and the news was making a big hype about it. They were about to get new pictures from deep space. And the pictures came. And I don't know what you did if you saw that, but what I did when I opened it, I just began up in my office to lift my hands and give praise, honor, and glory to the Creator. How can anybody look at the stars, the moon, and the the sun, where each and every one of them were intricately placed in a place for a specific purpose and for a specific reason, and look at these things and say there's no creator that this happened with just a simple bang. Let me tell you what the bang is. The bang is bang. God said it, and it came into creation. Somebody give the creator some praise in this place. That was for free. That is not even in my notes. You know what? Let me, let me talk to students, young people. I don't know what, you, I know what your professors are telling you, but let me tell you what. We didn't just come from apes and monkeys. We were not just a bunch of sludge and a bunch of particles just floating around. And one day, all of a sudden, it was just like, well, maybe we'll come together and we'll make something. No, there is a divine creator that created you and created me with an identity and with a purpose. He's the 
one that placed the sun, the moons, and the stars in their specific place. Why? When we, so when we look at them, we can say, there is a God. Somebody give God some praise. There is a God. There's a creator. But with the creator, all the way in the beginning, there was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's not a new thing. The Holy Spirit's not a trendy thing. He's not been simply moving since the book of Acts into 2022, but he's been on the move since day number one. Day number one. He's never stopped moving. And I'm here to tell somebody he never will stop moving. Somebody say amen. The Holy Spirit in the, in the Hebrew is the word ruach. It's the word ruach, which means what? Somebody help me out. I know there's some saints that know what it means. Ruach means, it means what? It means breath. B breath. He breathed. He, the ruach is his breath, the breath of God hovered over the earth. What does that word hovered mean in the book of Genesis chapter 1? It means to flutter, to move, to shake, to rest. When I looked up that word hovering and what it meant to flutter, to move, to shake, and to rest, I was like, well, those are some really interesting words. Do you know what a flutter is, church? A flutter is, think of like a butterfly or a bird that's in the air, and it's flapping its wings very quick and lightly. But how many of you have ever seen like a bird that is flapping, and their wings are moving rapidly, but you don't see them moving, right? You see their wings moving. You don't see them soaring just yet, but you ever seen that? A bird just kind of stationary in the air, just flapping, and is looking at you like, what, you going to give me a piece of that funnel cake on the boardwalk at Ocean City? You know what I'm talking about? I don't know where that came from, Lord. It must have been the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one in the stillness. He's the one on the move. He's the one, let me tell you something, he's shaking the earth. He was shaking the earth, and even all the way back in the beginning, the Holy Spirit was resting over the earth. What's the next thing that happened after verse 2? This is powerful. We see the Holy Spirit hovering over the earth, resting like a blanket over the earth. And the next thing, and this is so powerful, that if you go to verse 3, this is what we see. The next thing that happened is, then God, what? Said. Say it with me, church. Then God. God said. What does that mean for all of us today? In the two opening scriptures of the Bible, we see the holy, this is what I saw right when, I, just, this is how awesome the word of God is. You could pull out a whole bunch of stuff just by reading two verses. When I read that, I saw three things here. If you're taking notes on your phone or on a, a notepad, whatever you've got, three things that I see here that the Holy Spirit is doing all the way in the book of Genesis chapter 1 is, number one, he, he's resting over the darkness and was unaffected by the darkness. I feel the Holy Spirit on that. Number two, he makes ready the earth for the voice of God. Number three, he releases God's power to supernaturally create. Somebody say amen. When, which, which is what the Holy Spirit does for each and every one of us. He rests and he's not phased by any darkness going on around you. That, let me tell you what. That's why you can see people like a pastor or a, a prophetess or a, a whoever that are standing in a dark generation and they are boldly declaring the word of God without compromise and with conviction. Why? Because they've got something upon them that is not of this world and it is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes you ready for the voice of God upon your life. How does he make you ready for the voice of God upon your life? One word, conviction. That's not a word that you hear a lot of church circles talking about these days. Let me tell you something. By the raising of your hands, are you thankful that there is a Holy Spirit that has ever convicted you? 
Why? Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that all scripture is inspired by God. And one of the things that Paul writes to Timothy is that he says that this word is to here for correction upon your life. How many of you, by the raising of your hand, one more time, you can say, I'm thankful when the Holy Spirit has convicted me. Let me tell you what I'm here to tell you. You ought to be thankful when you read the word, when you hear a message, and all of a sudden you start to feel like, oh man, I'm not, I'm not right. I'm not right with the Lord. Thank God for the Holy Spirit convicting each and every one of us. Why? So we can turn to the cross, repent, and make ourselves right before the King of glory. Amen. I'm thankful for conviction. Thankful for, I'm thankful that I felt conviction just two days ago. Somebody's like, well, what the pastor do? We don't need to get into that because it's under the blood. It's under the blood. How many of you are thankful that when you come before the cross and you say, Lord, forgive me for all my sin, that your sin is no longer held against you, that you are in the courtroom where there's an adversary that he's telling you that you're a liar, you're not worth, you have no worth in this world, you've done so much wrong that you can't be forgiven of, but thank God that you have a pardon and the pardon came by the shedding of the blood on Calvary from Jesus Christ. If you go before him and ask for forgiveness, it's come covered under the blood, and the sin is thrown in the sea of forgetfulness once and for all. And I wish somebody would give God glory that they are forgiven from sin. <laughs> Thankful for the conviction that I feel, especially when I'm in my car. Whew. Anyways, I don't, <laughs> I'm going to move on. But thirdly, the Holy Spirit releases God's voice into your life, changes you supernaturally into a new creation. But here's the thing that I want to assure every person in this place today, that with darkness all around us, whatever your circumstance is today, let me tell you something. I want, and I want every person to hear my voice today, that you are a candidate for the receiving of the Holy Spirit today. You are a candidate for the receiving of the Holy Spirit today. He's not reserved for the spiritual elite. He's not exclusive for pastors, for prophets, evangelists, apostles, worship leaders, or even church staff and employees. But the Holy Spirit is available to every single person that is hearing the sound of my voice in this sanctuary and online today that you have an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to be poured out in your life. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. It's available to everyone. But here's the thing that the Holy Spirit requires of you. He needs legal access to you. What do I mean by that? Well, the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9, says a verse that we all know very well. And this sermon might sound somewhat elementary for some, but how many of you know that sometimes we got to go back to elementary school? How many of you know that, and, we, and we've got new believers, and we've got people that are new to the faith. We need to go, I, let me tell you something. Sometimes I feel like we do need to go back to elementary school. Why? Because we need a spirit of sanity to come back into this culture and into this nation. There's so much insanity that is all around us. You ever look at the news and ever look at social media, and you say, my God, this world is crazy, and this cr world is insane, the things that are going on all around us, the things that people are saying. But let me tell you what, we've got to we got to go back to elementary school at times to understand the foundations of what the Word of God has to say. First John chapter 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you glad that you are forgiven of your sin and cleansed from all unrighteousness? Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that what? Here's the promise. You shall be saved. You just got to believe. 
Do you believe that he is the son of God? And do you believe that he is risen from the grave? Death no longer has a hold on him. The grave could not hold him any longer. He is out of the grave and he is alive now and forevermore. And he's at the right hand of the father. And he is just waiting for the father to give him the green light to make his way back to this world. I'm telling you, he's coming again. I'm telling somebody in this place that's listening to the sound of my voice that this is your time. This is your hour. This is your moment to make your life right before the King of glory. Why? Because Jesus is coming again. It's not a lie. It's not a fairy tale. It's a guarantee that our King, the Son of the living God, He's coming again. The Bible says that He's going to come and He's going to ride on the clouds. Hallelujah. And I wish somebody would get that revelation today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to get to know the one that I know. He's coming again. Why do you think that there's such an urgency in so many pastors? Let me tell you something. I've seen an uptick over the last two years where I see more pastors now that are getting back to preaching the whole word of God, preaching repentance, preaching sin. Why? Because they're, they're, they've heard an, uh, the alarm sound. I'm here to tell you the alarm has been sound. You ever been waking up out of your sleep by an alarm clock before? What I pray is that we need to not hit the snooze button and close our eyes. But when we hear the alarm to get up out of our slumber, get up out of our sleep. Why? Because he's coming again. My Savior's coming again. I'm thankful that he's coming again. Sometimes I can't wait till he's to, for him to come. I'm like, Lord, you, do, you need to come now. You need to save me from this world. But you know what he says? No, I'm, I, I, I've got you here for such a time as this. Why? Because your neighbor needs the Lord. Your coworker needs the Lord. Your, your, your daughter needs the Lord. Your husband needs the Lord. I've got you here for a reason, Justin. And the reason is, is that I'm calling you to get on the move and to release the, what I've given you on the inside of you so that you might see some that are saved by my hand and my, by my glory. And here's the thing, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't require a perfect vessel, he just requires a clean vessel. Some people have been looking at this all morning long, like what's underneath of that? And i got to take this off without this stuff falling over, very delicately. I came back to the vessels today, and I wasn't planning on it, but I just felt the Holy Spirit leading me to do it. You know, last week I talked about perfect vessels, imperfected vessels, vessels that have chips and things of that sorts. But here's the thing. For you to get for you to have the Holy Spirit, He's not looking for a perfect vessel. He's looking for a clean vessel. Why? Because the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 24, he said, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Somebody help me out. He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart who has not lift his soul to an idol, not sworn deceitfully. What does it say? He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Let me tell you what the first thing for the Holy Ghost to come is for you to be a clean vessel. These vessels, like I held up last week, this one looks pretty good, wouldn't you say? Some are like, well, I wouldn't put that in my house. Well, that's your, you know, your own opinion, right? But it looks pretty good. I don't see many scratches on it. But in the inside of what looks perfect on the outside could be filled with iniquity, like I said last week. And on the outside, all these this imperfections, you see this chip up here at the top. And it feels rough. The edge feels rough. But, you know, God looks at this and he says, I can use that chip, that imperfection, that rough edge, and I can use it for my glory. He can use your rough edges, your rough chips, your imperfections, 
and he could still use you for the glory of God. All he needs is he needs the inside of you clean for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Somebody say amen. I'd like to move on here for just a moment because I said I'm, I'm going to try not to preach too long. If you, to get the Holy Spirit, you need salvation. When you confess your sins, ask for forgiveness, and let Jesus come be the Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible says that you, are immediate, you immediately are given, you're giving the Holy Spirit legal access into your life to make ready and be released in your life. And here's the thing. I mentioned this very briefly last week. That there is a difference between being full of the Holy Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Many people are made ready, but they never step into a place of release of the Holy Spirit over their lives. And that's what I want to talk about for just a few moments today, is I want to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit for just a few moments. I still believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what the church down the street says. I don't care what the cessationist online on YouTube says that says that that stuff died with the apostles. No, I believe that the power, the manifest gifts of the Holy Spirit are available for each and every single one of us in this place today. Can I get an amen from somebody in this place today? I believe still in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to be, I, there's, let me tell you something. Years ago, when I was 16 years old, I was at a church in Hartford County named Har Calvary Worship Center where our former pastors uh, were pastoring. I got saved up there. I gave my heart to the Lord. You guys have heard my testimony. Spending all those years in church, being dragged there by my mom, taken to the altar, getting prayer for deliverance because I was just a hellion and all of that. And it was at 16 years old where I got saved. But here's the thing about it, that when I got saved, I knew that there was something more than just salvation. There was something more than just Jesus save me. And I went, oh, this is the God honest truth. I went one week, one week of just giving the Lord praise. Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for redeeming me. Do you remember the day when you were saved that it just felt like a fire shut up in your bones? You were just so on fire for God. And, and, and I'm not talking to anybody in this place that remember when they got saved. They said, I want more, Lord. I want all that you have in store for me. And I remember feeling that way. And I remember it was a, it was a week to the day that I sat in a pew at Evangel Cathedral, which is now our White Marsh campus for Life Source. And I sat on the corner of the pew. And I remember the and I remember the preacher was a special guest preacher said to a bunch of young people, if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, today you're going to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I remember I just said, Lord, I want more. There, I know that there is more that you have for me. And I said, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It didn't take a month. It didn't take a year. It didn't take a decade. It took one week to go to another service and get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you what, since having the baptism of the Holy Spirit all my life, I am just so thankful unto God. God, for the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for his anointing, and I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Spirit. I knew that there was something more, and there's more in store for you in this place today. He's got more in store. I explained last week in Ephesians chapter 1, it teaches us that we, when we come to believe in Paul writes, and he, when we come to believing in Jesus Christ, and we have received him as the Lord of our lives, he identifies us as his own by giving us the Holy Spirit is what Ephesians chapter 1 says. Now, I want to demonstrate this for just a moment if you're with me. And hopefully everybody can see this. This is what the Holy Spirit does. If this is you, when you get saved, all of a sudden, according to what Paul writes... You've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Are you thankful that you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you for those that are saved? I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit in my life. But here's the thing about this. 
Some people in the body of Christ will go their entire lives without what's on the inside of them being released. What do I mean? Well, this is what the Word of God says. I want to take this to the Word of God for just a moment, if you're with me. The book of John, chapter 20, says this in verse 19. This is what the Bible says. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled, why, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst. This is what happened after he rose from the grave. And Jesus said unto them, he said, peace be with you. And in verse 20 says, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. Why? Because he had risen from the grave. Somebody praise God for that. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And verse 21 says, so Jesus said again, peace to you as the Father has sent me, I also send you. But watch what he says in verse 22. He says, and when he had said this, he what? He breathed upon them. And he said what? Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, fast forward to the book of Acts chapter 1. In the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, it says this. And being assembled together with them. This is Jesus. Jesus commands them not to depart from Jerusalem. But what? Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Have you ever read that those two scriptures and kind of wondered to yourself for a moment? In John chapter 20, he had appeared before the disciples and he says, he breathed upon them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. But then he tells them again to wait in Jerusalem for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there's a difference between being filled with the Holy Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit being released on the outside of you. Let me demonstrate this for a moment. If this is your vessel and this vessel is the Holy Spirit, what God says is like, he says this, he says, what I've given for you and into you, what I've poured into you, it's not for you to just keep for yourself. But what I want to do is I'm making you ready for the releasing of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to fill you up and not just fill you up, but you're going to begin to overflow. And when you begin to overflow, there's going to be a release of my spirit. There's going to be a release of my anointing upon your life. Look, look at what is happening right here with the water. This is what the Lord wants to do in your life is he wants the release of the Holy Spirit upon your life. You are not just meant to come to church, get saved. You are called to do more. There is more in store for each and every one of us. And what he wants to do is not just fill you, but he wants to overflow. And he wants to baptize you in this. Amen. I want you to take a look at this for a moment. This is powerful because I'm getting this revelation right now by looking at this. I'm going to sit right here if that's okay. I'm looking at this vessel. And before I could see my vessel, full of water. But once the outpouring came over my vessel and overflowed my vessel to the point where I have been baptized in the whole, you can't see my vessel. And that's what the Holy Spirit does is when the Holy Spirit is released upon your life, then you're what you're showing the world. You're not, you don't want to show the world what you look like. You want them to see what God looks like. Somebody give the Lord praise. I mean, I'm standing right here, and I'm looking. I'm like, I'm having a hard time seeing my vessel. That's the way it should be when we got the Holy Spirit upon our lives. I don't want people to see me. I don't want people to see my flesh. What I want people to see when they look upon my life is I want them to see God. I want them to see Jesus Christ upon my life. I don't care what else they see as long as they see him. It's powerful. There's so much more in store for you. He wants to overflow your vessel. 
outpour. Anybody want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on their life? I want to be swallowed up by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be seen. I, don't, I just want him to be seen through me and in me. It's powerful revelation. Let me move on here for just a moment. Like that vase. When you're saved, you receive the Holy Spirit on the inside. You're made ready for the Holy Spirit. And like I said, he doesn't want to stop there. He wants to be released. He wants an overflow out of you. Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Those scriptures from John chapter 1 and, or John chapter 20 and Acts verse 1, they might offer some confusion, well, you know, uh, about, about the timing and everything. But when you read it and when you study it, confusion goes away because let me tell you what, there's a difference between you having the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit having you. I need to say that again so somebody can get that revelation. There is a difference between you having the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit having you. Let me come back down to my watery vase right here. I, before I had my vessel filled with water, filled with the Holy Spirit, but once I put myself in this vessel of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit come from the inside and overflow onto the outside, let me tell you, oh, let me tell you something. This is so good that it's, there's, more that, there's more to this. It's that you, the Holy Spirit needs to have you. Look at this. This vessel in here. It has me. This big vessel of the Holy Spirit, it has my vessel. There's a difference. I want the Holy Spirit to have me. I want the Holy Spirit to have all of me. I don't just want the Holy Spirit, but I want the Holy Spirit to have me. I want you to th ask yourself, does the Holy Spirit have you today? The Holy Spirit doesn't want to make room doesn't just want to make room for him, but he wants to be released on the outside. If we go back to our reading from the book of Genesis chapter 1, the Holy Spirit was on the face of the earth. But here's the thing about it. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth, released over the earth. But have you noticed that God's voice had not been released yet? There was no release of light. There was no release of life, movement. Everything was simply waiting for the voice of God to be released. Which is, which is a lot like people that are saved, that get saved. Think about it. They give their heart to the Lord, but they remain still. They have no action. They have no life. And how many, raise your hand if you've seen it. You've seen people, they've come and they've given their heart to the Lord, but they don't get to moving. They don't get the action behind them. And what we see happen time and time again is that they completely fade away. You don't see them in church. Their love for church, their love for the cross, their love for the word of God, all that fades away and they die. Let me tell you what, I'm here to tell somebody in this place today and online that there is more in store for you. I want you to stand up to your feet. I said I wasn't going to preach too long. They're like, my God, it's not even 1230 and he's having us stand up because we're going to pray. And I want, I want prayer warriors pr already praying in the Holy Spirit. You know why there's more in store for you? Because and this is a revelation that I got the other day. If the, the reason why I know that there is more in store and God has more in store for you is because if, if God simply wanted to see you saved and to make heaven your home, if, it, if that was it, there was nothing else, well, then why aren't we just giving our heart to the Lord and just simply dying? Why is it that if that's all that's in store is to make heaven our home, why do we not just see people that say, Lord, come be the Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me for my sin. I, I, I plead the blood over my life. In Jesus' name, they pray a sinner's prayer. They pray those type of prayers. Amen. And then all of a sudden, they just die. If that's the purpose and the plan. No, because there is something greater in store. God has got something great in store for each and every one of us. God wants to use you.
to advance his kingdom. I'm here to tell the devil, that lying devil that, that has tried to rob somebody in this place of their purpose. I'm here to tell that devil, that spirit, that lying spirit this morning that you are a liar and I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ in this place. I silence the, the voices of darkness over your life that try to lie and try to tell you that you don't have a purpose, that God doesn't have a plan for your life. God has a purpose purpose and a plan and a reason for you being on this earth. Every single one of us, you have a talent, you have a gift, you have an ability. Maybe you're a, 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 an eloquent speaker. Maybe you write. God can use that for his glory. Every single one of us have something to contribute to the kingdom of God. But you gotta have, you gotta want more. When I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit over my life, it's because Sister Sandy, I wanted more. Is there anybody in this place that you want more than what you've got right now? And here's the thing: you don't want it for you, but you want it so that people will see him and not you. Just like this, these vessels right here. And what I wanted to do as I was just preparing for this Sunday morning service is I felt such a strong burden. This is probably the shortest message I've preached in one year. That's okay. Because I just felt such an incredible burden to just have a, some time of prayer. Hey, welcome back. I believe for someone who watched this message that the Lord spoke something to you that encouraged you, opened your eyes to something new, or even gave you hope for tomorrow. I'm so thankful to God that in this day and age that we're living in, that he's speaking and his word is a word of hope in not just times of difficulty, but in all times. The Bible says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. That means that it's his word that lights up the darkness that may at times surround our path. It's the gospel message that provides illumination to get us to our heavenly destination. And it's his word that keeps us on the right heading and off the paths of darkness. And we thank God for the word today. I want us to come into agreement for your situation today. Maybe you're struggling with faith today. I pray this word builds up your faith in the Lord. Maybe you're lost and feeling hopeless. Just call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved and hope will be restored. Maybe you're in need of a miracle today. No matter what the circumstance is, we know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Let's pray together right now, Lord. There is someone watching that is in need of you right now, someone that is hurting, someone that is broken, someone that is in need for you to move in their circumstance and situation right now, Lord. And we call upon the God of the impossible, and we ask that you would release mountain-moving faith into those watching. And that situation that may look bleak, may look impossible, that you would do what only you can do. For we know that through God, all things are possible. I thank you that you're turning their situation around. And we thank you for the testimonies that will come forth of your goodness and faithfulness. And we pray that every testimony that will 
come forth will be used to show others just how good and faithful you are. We come into agreement on our prayers and petitions that we've laid before you, and we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We love you. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you next time. God bless.